Hello everybody. Um, I normally haven't read anything that's not my own poetry, uh, but I decided to read uh, sections of the Manusmriti today. Uh, a lot of people who follow me here on Twitter or who will be watching this uh, YouTube video of mine or possibly my readers from outside of Tamil Nadu and so uh, you'd be worrying or thinking <laughs> why is she constantly tweeting about the Manusmriti and the ban on the Manusmriti and what is it in the Manusmriti that is so offensive to women and why is it that as feminists and especially as women uh, we need to be up in arms against it. I'm not going into the sections that are so uh, anti Shudra or anti lower caste or anti people who don't belong to the caste order because there are things like oh if they hear the Vedas you gotta pour hot oil um, in their ears you have to pour molten lead in their ears um, that's another video for another day but today is going to be this exclusive reading of you know sections from the Manusmriti that deal with women so yeah here I go of course I'm not reading in Sanskrit I'm reading translations in English but these are easily verifiable on the internet uh, so this is um, from the second chapter number 213 it is the nature of women to seduce men in this world for that reason the wise are never unguarded in the company of females 214 from the second chapter women true to their class character are capable of leading astray men in this world not only a fool but even a learned and wise man both become slaves of desire uh, 215 wise people should avoid sitting alone with one's mother daughter or sister since carnal desire is always strong it can lead to temptation and here is more and these are from chapter 9, which really, really, really deals with, you know, women exclusively. Day and night, women must be kept in dependence by the male of their families. And if they attach themselves to sensual enjoyments, they must be kept under one's control. Point, um, the shloka number 3. Her hus a father protects her in childhood. Her husband protects her in youth and her sons protect her in old age, a woman is never fit for independence. Women must particularly be guarded against evil inclinations, however trifling they may appear, for if they are not guarded, they will bring sorrow on two families. Considering that the highest duty of all castes, even weak husbands, must strive to guard their wives. Um, there's a lot of shaming going on here. It's difficult to continue, but I'm going to keep going ahead. He who carefully guards his wife, preserves the purity of his offspring, virtuous conduct, his family, himself and his means of acquiring merit. And then there are some very saucy parts. Women do not care for beauty, nor is their attention fixed on age, thinking. It's enough that he's a man, they give themselves to the handsome and to the ugly. Through their passion for men, through their mutable temper, through their natural heartlessness, they become disloyal towards their husbands, however carefully they may be guarded in this world. Knowing their disposition, which the Lord of creatures laid in them at the creation to be such, every man must more strenuously exert himself to guard them. When creating them, Manu allotted to women a love of their bed, of their seat, of ornament, impure desires, wrath, dishonesty, malice and bad conduct. For women, no sacramental rite is performed with sacred text Thus the law is settled. Women who are destitute of strength and destitute of the knowledge of Vedic texts are as impure as falsehood itself. That is a fixed rule.
For disloyalty to her husband, a woman is censured among men and in her next life she is born in the womb of a jackal and tormented by diseases the punishment of her sin. Though a man may have accepted a damsel in due form, he may abandon her if she be blemished, diseased or deflowered and if she has been given with fraud. That's where the Manusmriti stands on virginity, premarital sex and things that Kushbu loves to stand for which she seems to have forgotten now. If anybody gives away a maiden possessing blemishes without declaring them, the bridegroom may annul that contract with the evil-minded giver. A barren wife may be superseded in the eighth year, she whose children all die in the tenth, she who bears only daughters in the eleventh, but she who is quarrelsome without delay. It goes on and on. I'm just going to choose one about you know women choosing their own spouses. A maiden who chooses for herself shall not take with her any ornaments given by her father or her mother or her brothers. If she carries them away, it will be theft. Um, so this is the kind of uh, things that are there in the Manusmriti. And as I said earlier, the sections that deal with uh, the lower caste and the punishments for the lower caste are even more horrid uh, but this video is just about women do go and look up what it says about women and in order to understand uh, where uh, Mahatma Phule, uh, Tandai Periyar, uh, Revolutionary Ambedkar are coming from in attacking this text and uh, why we are indeed um, living at a very important historical moment because Dr. Tolthir Mavalavan has um, the president of the Vidhala Lecture of the Gilkarchi of the VCK has also taken up the struggle to ask for a ban on this text because it is absolutely, absolutely demeaning to all women of, across across the spectrum. Having said that, I also think that I just want to add uh, one more thing on why BJP is going uh, going after him like this. And I think there are three reasons. Uh, the first is that BJP is really, really trying hard to make inroads into Tamil Nadu. It's, it's been a constant process, but at this moment, it's really with assembly elections coming next year. I think they are really turning the heat on. And um, in the first week of November, they are scheduled to start uh, a Ratyatra of the type that, you know, they actually did with uh, the Babri Masjid around the time of the Babri Masjid demolition with Advani's infamous Ratyatra of the 1990. So right now it's called a Veliyatirai, but the aim is to communally polarize society, to cause divisions, to consolidate caste divisions, to cause mutual hatred among the people, and of course to heighten this idea of you know Hindu victimhood, Brahmin victimhood, to and so, yeah, that, that is their agenda because BJP always wants to reap electoral gains by dividing the people. The second, of course, is that uh, what they're doing is a complete and absolute distraction from the fact that they have absolutely fucked OBC people's reservation. And if you are, if you happen to be somebody belong to, belonging to the OBC communities and you are in any way sympathetic to the BJP, think again. In the last three years, they have denied 10,000 medical seats to OBC students and this year because of you know the decisions of the central government at least 500 medical seats that should go to OBC students is not going to them in Tamil Nadu at least 300 seats for dental uh, students is not going to OBC students again and so these people who claim to protect Hindus and Hindu um, identity are you know, the ones who are actually stabbing backward class students, Bahujan students, OBC students, Shudra students, who all happen to be majoritarian Hindu from actually accessing education. So can there be a better example of how the Manusmriti is in practice today? Because the Manusmriti says you cannot give education to Shudras. If the Shudra listens to any education, you pour molten lead in his ears. And that's exactly what they're doing with their fierce gatekeeping over denying you know 
education to the oppressed sections of society, to the Bahujans. Uh, and tomorrow, I think they would come after the Dalits. And I think this coming after the Dalits is also why they are launching this attack on one of the most important Dalit leaders this country has produced and knowing especially at such a time that you know a progressive state like Tamil Nadu would certainly look up to him would certainly rally under his leadership would certainly recognize him for being the kind of you know democratic uh, all-embracing party leader and that's possibly also why this kind of vicious trolling attack doxing and you know physical threat and intimidation is going on to the VCK's president, Dr. Tiruma. So I just wanted to make this video to let women know because if you think, oh, we're being offended by after seeing a clip or something, do realize that, you know, this is a text that's been challenged by Periyar, challenged by Ambedkar, who gave us the constitution and is now being challenged by the VCK and Dr. Tiruma. And I also want you to realize that um, any effort at articulating something for Hindu women has come at great cost to the leaders themselves. So when Dr. Ambedkar was making the Hindu code bill, there was enormous pushback against him. You know, they were like, uh, he's basically granting divorce rights for women and there were so many cartoons that completely humiliated him. So what we are saying is a kind of repeat of the same history. Uh, but I do think that, you know, Indian Tamil women, Hindu women, all women will come out much more empowered from this that also we as you know women would be much um, open to accepting a Dalit Ambedkarite leadership that takes us closer to women's liberation and also takes us closer to the annihilation of caste because in India there is no mincing words we have to say that women's liberation is closely tied up to and this actually lies at the heart of caste annihilation so thank you for watching this video. Bye.